beautiful day of just with Tyler Glass now. I mean, I know that it's a huge opportunity to acquire him in the trade, but just what are you looking forward to seeing him, not only in his first outing, his practicing, but really um, as you guys are closer to the season? Um, today's a, a good step for Tyler, um, first day as a Dodger, and I know he's excited about today. Um, it's going to be two innings, that's the plan. And um, I think just, you know, I think you're going to hear me say this a lot, is just command the baseball. It's going to come in, you know, upper 90s and just kind of uh, have the command and some curveballs in there. But um, I'm excited. It's a, it's a good step. I'm excited for all of us to get him uh, make his debut. Has he communicated to you just like when in spring, like he knows whether it's a certain pitch he's kind of focusing in on or like what allows him to know that he's kind of a really good spot heading into the um, I, I think the direction of his uh, of his pitches, because he's a typically a, a north south guy, so uh, just making sure he's throwing the baseball in that same lane. Um, I know the curveball is is a deadly pitch that he has, and being able to strike it, but also get swing and miss or chase with it is something that um, he's mindful of. And uh, you know, assuming this goes well, then he'll make another start and do three in the um, it's going to be next week, um, and uh, I'm just trying to right now just make sure as he prepares for for next week, uh, it, it make sure things continue to go uh, accordingly. And so, uh, middle of next week is is what we're shooting for. So I'm just kind of giving him a little bit of latitude, and Shohei as well is going to make his uh, Dodger debut sometime in the middle of next week. I mean, you guys have brought in a lot of pitchers over the years. You have ideas on things they can do differently or for better. Like with somebody like him, who is kind of more established, you know, at that level, like, is it the same process? Are there things that the guys are running by him to tweak or change, or do you give him a little bit more leeway with his own stuff and how he goes about trying to? I, I think that's here? that's fair. Um, I think that with Tyler, um, considering that he came from the Rays that there's a lot of things that we think a lot alike. We see things pretty similarly. So, uh, and also the fact that he's been in the big leagues for quite some time. So um, it, it's not as much, uh, there's not as much low hanging fruit or opportunity that we see in some other players. Um, so I think for us, it's just kind of building off of what he did last year. And that was the most innings he's ever thrown. So just continuing to uh, have the dialogue and keep him healthy and know that if he's healthy, then he's going to perform. Is he one of these guys that have like a lot of ideas about what he's trying to do with his pitches, how he wants to attack batters, how to use his arsenal, that kind of thing? Very cerebral, yeah. He, he, I've already learned early that he does a lot of homework. Um, he knows his strengths and what he's good at and uh, appreciates the hitter's weaknesses as well. And so how he attacks each hitter and goes into games, like it's very evident to me that um, very mindful. What is it like even at this stage that like sticks out about what he does that kind of gives you that? Um, I, I think for me right now it's his uh, body awareness, um, his awareness of his mechanics, and uh, the thing that excites me is that he's very, uh, the dialogue with him and Connor and Mark has been fantastic. So, you know, kind of opening up the curtain, the hood on him uh, makes this process of kind of learning each other work quicker, so that's been good too. You guys faced a couple of times in that World Series, and back, back in that time, what was it like game plan against him? Yeah, you know, I think obviously it's a plus fastball, it's plus characteristics. Um, you know, trying to think back to 2020, it was trying to get on the fastball, you know, because it's an elite fastball, it's a big extension. And um, then you bake in the change up and then the curveball. So he's got weapons to get right and left out. But, you know, even talking to Mookie this winter, um, you know, once we made this deal, he was very grateful because that's one of those guys that he really didn't look forward to facing. It's almost been like one of those premium stuff guys, but to take that sort of next step in, is it mostly just the volume or is there anything else that you can throw in the I think the next step is, um, is the volume. I think that he's also being mindful of being a little bit better at managing the running game. And, um, you know, outside of that, for me, uh, you know, he, he's a number one for any team in baseball. Uh, with 
With Gavin, I know that you're continuing to kind of run him out of DH to get his legs under him. Do you feel that the next step for him to be playing in the field is relatively closer? Yeah, Gavin will play uh, shortstop tomorrow. So um, that'll be good. I, I know he's excited and um, no DH again today, and then he'll play. He'll get three at bats, five innings, something like that, in short tomorrow. And then you had mentioned that Walker just um, one more bullpen, and he felt like maybe he's going to pick up. Is that one more bullpen? Is that one you see today? Or yeah, you yeah. It, it, it should be, I mean, and uh, again, this is kind of how things go today for Walker, but if it goes well, then the next progression should be a business finish.